Allora, buonasera a tutti. Eh, presentazione in italiano and the conference will be in English. You know my English and then it's better if the presentation is in Italian. Eh, stasera abbiamo l'onore di ospitare il professor Pier Giacomo Petrioli, che è uno storico dell'arte. Eh, era da anni che non avevamo storici dell'arte per le nostre conferenze, quindi siamo molto molto lieti di ospitarlo. Lui insegna corsi di storia dell'arte rinascimentale e di cultura italiana del cibo e del vino in diversi programmi di università americane in Italia. Ed è per questo che è molto conosciuto tra gli storici dell'arte italiani e esteri. Ha insegnato storia della critica d'arte all'Università di Firenze e si occupa in particolare di storia della critica d'arte senese, bolognese e anche di storia delle artiste italiane e di storia e cultura del cibo nell'arte. Ha pubblicato diversi articoli, volumi su tutti questi argomenti e tra cui quello che ci interessa stasera è un, uh, uno studio molto particolare che riguarda le raffigurazioni della razza del maiale che penso conosciate tutti, la cinta senese e del suo percorso artistico. Quindi vedremo questo maialino, come si evolve, ma eh, ascolteremo direttamente dalla voce del nostro oratore. Io ho già dato un'occhiata ai suoi maialini, quindi qualche cosa lo so già, però moltissimo mi interessa e credo che questo integrerà anche le poche cose di lettura dell'immagine che con alcuni di voi abbiamo avuto occasione di fare. Quindi molte grazie per essere intervenuto e le lascio subito la parola. Grazie mille. Grazie. Well, first of all, uh, thank you uh, to the Università Univers delle Scienze Gastronomiche, Professor Andrea Campanini and Paolo Corvo for having invited me. Uh, it's a pleasure and thank you for coming to listen to this uh, small introduction to a very unusual topic for our history. So the topic is about uh, pigs in, uh, in art. And uh, I like to start talking about um, this uh, particular uh, variety of pig Uh, popular in the Sinas territory, the so-called Cinta Senese. This is the Sinas Cinta, and uh, its characteristics are uh, peculiar. So it's uh, basically a uh, small uh, black pig with a white strip. Uh, called cinta, cintura, it means belt or belted pig. So <clears throat> finally, cinta means a uh, uh, black pig with a uh, white belt like, uh, uh, like this one. The cinta senese is a DOP product since uh, 2012 and uh, the Cinta Senese is uh, usually bred in uh, Tuscany. The <clears throat> area for breeding the Cinta Senese is almost the Chianti region. So uh, among Florence, Grosseto, I try to find uh, Grosseto, Siena, and uh, Arezzo. So the core of the region is uh, the Chianti, south of Florence, north of Siena. The denomination of Cinta Senese dates back to 1927 when Ettore Mascheroni 
scientist in his Trattato di Zootecnia Speciale, so treatise uh, about special zootechnology in 1927, wrote about this specific uh, variety of pig, calling it Cinta Senese. Characteristics of Cinta Senese are <clears throat> those ones. Cinta Senese is basically a small uh, pig. So here, for instance, we can compare uh, a large white pig with the Cinta Senese. We can see how, you know, the Cinta Senese is much smaller. Um, usually, uh, Cinta Senese is around 150 kilos. And uh, just to have an idea, the large white pig is around 350 uh, kilos. So much bigger and in terms of economy, much more convenient than Cinta Senese. Also, the Cinta Senese is uh, Demi wild pig. In uh, Tuscany, they uh, call the Cinta Senese maiale accindialato. So, <clears throat> between uh, pig and wild boar. The Cinta Senese is breeding in to the wild and woods of the Chianti region and usually. Uh, is fed by roots, acorns from, from the wood. Uh, it means that in order to breed Cinta Senese, a uh, breeder had to, has to uh, purchase a large part of wood in the Chianti region and the Chianti, so today is a, one of the most expensive places in, uh, in Italy. So think about that because uh, it's very important in order to understand the cost of the Cinta Senese. And about the breeding regulation for the Cinta Senese, uh, the uh, breeding regulation is very strict. There are three important rules. First one, animals must have the right space to move. So <clears throat> the we can say that there are around 10 pigs per hectare. Think about that, talking about organic farming, so organic, uh, 10 animals are living in uh, 2,500 square meters. It means that the Cinta Senese lives in a space four times larger than you know, pig in uh, organic uh, farm. Second rule, the Cinta Senese uh, can be fed with products 60% from Tuscany, local products, of course, without soy, without OGM, and without derivatives from chemical extraction, uh, because uh, um, people um, want to preserve, you know, the original uh, characteristic for breeding, you know, the Cinta Senese, the same one for uh, centuries. Third, the rule, animals can, cannot be slaughtered before they are one year old. If we think about all those aspects, we can <clears throat> easily understand how uh, breeding a Cinta Senese is not very um, convenient in terms of economy. Uh, think about that uh, white large pig is producing much more meat and uh, faster than, than the Cinta uh, Senese. And uh, all those aspects are, you know, connected with the cost of Cinta Senese. In fact, on left here, you can see cost of very uh, special product, uh, Parma ham. 
it's a DOP product, but think about that uh, Parma ham costs 23, uh, 23 euros per kilo. On the other hand, the Cinta Senese costs 54 euros per kilo. So more than twice Parma ham. So it's a very expensive uh, product. But it's also uh, different from traditional uh, pork meat. In fact, we discovered that the characteristics of the chinta uh, meat are very, very interesting. Even if uh, you, you can see the chinta uh, meat look very, very fat, actually uh, the chinta has a higher percentage of meat and a lower percentage of fat. And uh, talking about fat, we can see how uh, the chinta has higher percentage of unsaturated fat, particularly omega-6 and omega-9, and a lower percentage of saturated fat. So it means that the chinta fat is healthier than uh, uh, pork fat. The chinta uh, fat is made up of 57% of oleic acid, same acid of olive oil. And oleic acid plays a very important role for healthy diet. Oleic acid is known for its beneficial effects on the cardiovascular system uh, as antioxidant uh, effect. It's able to maintain a normal blood cholesterol levels the so-called uh, uh, cattivo cholesterol, the bad cholesterol levels, and uh, re to reduce the values of blood pressure. So it's particularly uh, important aspect connected with the quality of the chinta uh, product. The European Food Safety Authority states that replacing saturated fats in the diet with unsaturated fats such as the oleic acid contributes to maintain normal blood cholesterol levels. So it's a very healthy uh, product and uh, on the other hand, very expensive. This is a, a quite big problem because uh, uh, the cinta senese is becoming more and more popular among customers. But the point is that we can't increase a lot, you know, the production of cinta because the area for bringing the cinta is always the same. And the numbers of the cinta pigs is always the same. So we have the same problem we have with many DOP products and for instance, with the OCG wines in Italy. Same quantity, more requests, more customers who want to test uh, the Cinta Senese. And uh, the point is more cost. The Cinta Senese is getting more and more expensive. And another aspect also connected with many DOP products is that we have some fake cinta senese, uh, ham or meat, uh, forgeries of cinta senese. And uh, according to that was created a consortium of cinta senese in order to uh, control uh, the origins of, you know, the cinta uh, products and uh, to check uh, the quality of, you know, well, the cinta, the cinta senese is a very important resource for the uh, Tuscan uh, economy today, the cinta senese. But uh, <clears throat> the cinta senese is not just uh, mm, healthy, tasty, uh, 
product. It's much more than, uh, than uh, pig. And uh, <clears throat> as uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I told uh, you before, I, um, I tried to make a research about the origins of the Cinta Senese. Is the Cinta Senese really, you know, well, a local traditional pig? Is just a pig or more? And when did, you know, the Cinta Senese uh, become to get, you know, well, to be bred uh, in uh, Tuscany? According to that, I tried to use our history in order to explore uh, the origins of the Cinta Senese and the popularity of this pig. In other words, uh, I tried to use um, art for our history for history of agriculture. So <clears throat> I found around 90 different pictures during the centuries of the Cinta Senese. Don't be worried, I show you just very small selection uh, of them in order to understand, you know, the history of this variety of pig. And uh, we start from Siena. We are in Siena, inside the town hall of Siena, the Palazzo Publico. This is one of the most beautiful medieval uh, rooms. Uh, this room, the good government room, is a very rare example the largest and the most beautiful example of political frescoes during Middle Ages. This room was decorated in 1342 by a local genius, Ambrogio Lorenzetti, and this work was commissioned by the government of Siena, the government of the Nine, because Siena was a, a democracy, republic, and the parliament was composed by nine members. So it's an example of political uh, propaganda in visual arts. Here, Ambrogio Lorenzetti on the left uh, pictured allegory of the good government. So the comune of Siena surrounded by virtues. And uh, the allegory is facing on this side of the wall, uh, the well, town under the good government. The town, of course, is Siena. So over there, we can see uh, buildings of Siena, Siena's people um, during those times. It looks like a postcard from uh, 14th century Siena. And uh, thank, thanks to accuracy uh, of Ambrogio Lorenzetti and many details he pictured over there, we can have a lot of information about everyday life in a medieval town. So over there we can see uh, buildings, people walking, and there's a marriage uh, professor uh, seen the studio, a university teaching to people. So it's an extremely accurate picture of Siena. Accurate and, of course, a little bit idealized because it was for political propaganda. So no criminals, no beggars, no poor people over there. You know, well, this painting was made in order to support the, the government of Siena. So this is the ta uh, town of Siena. But, and uh, there, on uh, our right, Ambrogio Lorenzetti pictured countryside of Siena under the good government, outside the city walls of Siena. Over there, we can see, for instance, the, uh, the famous Crete Senesi, the clay hills uh, south of Siena. Uh, we can see still today, same, exactly the same landscape. We can see aristocrats going for falcon hunting, farmers are at work. And also, we can see a farmer going to town with 
cinta senese, with a, uh, our pig. We can understand, thanks to this fresco painting, how the cinta senese actually was popular and bred during those times in Siena, was a very important aspect of local economy. But more, because this pig is not just a, just a pig, this cinta is not just a, uh, just a cinta, but is a symbol of Siena's identity too. In fact, on the left, there is the crest of Siena, the so-called Balzana, is a black and white crest. And uh, the black and white colors of the Cinta Senese are symbolic reference to uh, crest of Siena. So the Cinta became symbol of Siena, uh, something connected with, I want to say, um, civic identity and civic pride. Told you how <clears throat> my idea was to use uh, visual art in order to investigate the popularity of this uh, pig during the centuries. And talking about art, there are a couple of topics uh, where pigs are usually pictured. The first one is the calendar. Pictures of the Mount of the Year in uh, <clears throat> medieval art. They were quite popular. And uh, the structure of the calendar is that for each month of the year is pictured the most important activity connected with that month. Uh, for instance, talking about September or October, there is a, a harvest and wine making. Uh, we are in agricultural society, so uh, the most important activity we're connected with uh, agriculture. And the best uh, activity connected with month of December is killing of the pig, slaughtering of the pig. Uh, that was a very important event for people because it was a kind of fest, was a, a celebration because it was a very rare uh, moment where poor people too uh, could eat meat uh, in abundance. So on the left I put uh, early well, medieval example from the floor mosaic of the cathedral in Otranto, so south of Italy, Puglia. Here we can see the zodiac farmer killing the pig. And uh, I would love to compare this one with another one much more modern, uh, 300s after, north of Italy, Padova, December, so different place, different period, same picture, uh, farmer, you know, well, killing pig. Well, <clears throat> it's uh, interesting to see how the artist, the medieval artist from south of Italy, Puglia, pictured kind of wild pig, it looks like boar, uh, basically, and the artist, the Renaissance artist from north of Italy picture a different variety of pig. The idea is that more or less uh, artists were used to picture pigs they, they knew, they could see. Um, and according to that, we can uh, see how, for instance, talking about Tuscany, we are moving to Arezzo. On the facade of the Church of Santa Maria in Arezzo, there is a calendar. And talking about December, the farmer is killing pig. And uh, thanks to, well, colors, we can identify this pig as a cinta pig. We are in the 13th century, 1200s, in Tuscany, 
uh, around Arezzo, so the same area of the Cinta Pig today. So <clears throat> Ambrogio Lorenzetti, uh, 13. Um, 42 and this anonymous artist before 12 hours. We can uh, understand that the, pig, uh, the Cinta pig was popular in this area from 12 hours. And in Siena, 15th century, uh, another local painter, Sano di Pietro, uh, painting miniature for manuscript, the so-called Codice delle Monache, so uh, manuscript for uh, convent in Siena, mid 15th century, 1400s, picture, picturing the month of December, picture farmer going to town with a uh, cinta pig. Is almost the same um, picture uh, of Ambrogio Lorenzetti one century uh, after Ambrogio Lorenzetti. Nothing is changed in Siena and we can understand that the Cinta Senese uh, was still popular in, uh, in Siena. We can understand the importance of the Cinta Senese in this very rare uh, example. This is uh, uh, the book cover of the register of the government of Siena, so from the State Archive of Siena, dated 1346. Uh, this is the register of the Abundanza, Abundance, is a register about the <clears throat> public goods of the Siena's uh, Comune. Public food is about olive oil, wine, grain and cinta too. Uh, so the cinta, <clears throat> by looking at this book cover, uh, we can understand was used to play a very important role for economy of the Sinus uh, government, or uh, Sinus com community. And the idea of abundance, abundance is connected with the cinta. The anonymous painter didn't picture grain or wine, but the Cinta Senese. So the richness of a Sienes Comune is connected during 14th century with, with the Cinta Senese. Another <clears throat> field where pigs uh, are pictured in uh, visual art is the iconography of Saint Anthony the Abbot. From 11th century, Saint Anthony is uh, pictured with a pig. So here is a Saint Anthony, and here we can see a black pig. The origin of this iconography dates back uh, to France of 11th century when to cure an epidemic, epidemic of ergotism, food po poisoning caused by eating dry, uh, parasitized by fungus, people of Vienne, a uh, town nearby Lyon, came to pray in front of the relics of Saint Anthony and to be treated in the uh, Xenodocium, the hospital of the monastery, with a special oil made by monks with pork lard. The, this medicine was so su successful that it became so popular that the monks started to breed kind of sacred pigs uh, which were used for feeding the sick people and to make this medicine. So <clears throat> From this century, St. Anthony is uh, often pictured with pig. But what about iconography of St. Anthony in a Sinus area? This is <clears throat> my star, so Virgin Mary and baby Jesus on a throne, surrounded by 
Saints by <clears throat> uh, Lippo Memmi, uh, seen as artist of early uh, 14th century in San Gimignano, small town between Florence and Siena. On, the, on our left, we can see St. Anthony. Uh, this uh, St. Anthony was added by another painter from Siena, Bartolo di Fredi, during the second half of the 14th century, when this huge fresco was enlarged. The interesting point, and sorry because the quality of picture, is that the peak with St. Anthony is Cinta Senese. Also, moving from 14th century to 15th century, we can see how the Cinta Senese was still popular in this area. This is another <clears throat> painter from Siena, Priamo della Quercia. We are in Volterra, so the village between Pisa and uh, Siena. And one more St. Anthony and St. Anthony with the Cinta Peak. 15th century, 1400s. 16th century, 1530, uh, another genius of late Renaissance art in Siena, Sodoma, in the Church of Santo Spirito in Siena, pictured St. Anthony. And with St. Anthony, <coughs> excuse me, he pictured Cinta Peak. 1500s. Uh, One century later, Baroque, seen as painter, Rutilio Manetti, working in the Arciconfraternita of della Misericordia in Siena at the beginning of 1600s, picturing St. Anthony tempted by devils, on the background pictured Cinta Senese. After Rutilio Manetti, uh, I didn't find any examples of the Cinta Senese in visual arts till 2002. There's another artist from Siena, Pierluigi Olla. He made this relief with St. Anthony and he pictured Cinta, Cinta Senese. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we can see how around the uh, 17th century, the Cinta Senese uh, disappeared from, uh, well, iconography of St. Anthony, and finally uh, back to uh, art in 2002. So there is a kind of a break uh, between the 1600s and the uh, 21st uh, century. This is about Siena. What about other uh, areas? Um, talking about Florence and Florentine area, this is uh, another detail uh, by uh, late 14th century artist Spinello Aretino, 1380, uh, picturing uh, temptation of St. Anthony in Bagno a Ripoli, a small village nearby Florence. And here we can see how St. Anthony is pictured with a small Cinta Peak. Also, another anonymous master, the master of Signa, picturing Blessed Giovanna from Signa helping animals, 15th century. Among all those animals, we can see uh, Cinta Pig. Or again in San Gimignano, Master of 1419, uh, in this altarpiece, a beginning of 15th century, St. Anthony is pictured with uh, Cinta Senese. We can know that the Cinta Senese was popular also in uh, around the Florentine territory, the same territory where today is bred. But more about relevance of the Cinta Senese 
for uh, culture. This is uh, Annunciation by anonymous Madonna Strauss Master, dated late 14th century, 1395, in the Museum of the Academia in Florence, same museum of Michelangelo Stavi. And uh, on the frame of this work, we can see the coat of arms of families who um, sponsored, who paid for this uh, altarpiece. And the uh, coat of arms on the far right is picturing uh, Cinta Senese. In fact, some families had Cinta Senese as a symbol, as a family crest. For instance, the uh, name sounds pretty funny for us, Ciccia Porci from Florence. This is the tomb in the Santa Croce in uh, Florence. So here we can see a lot of Cinta pigs. The important uh, Jacopi family from Florence. And here we can see the Cinta. The Porcellini from uh, Perugia. So we are in uh, Umbria region. The Parigini or Parisini from Florence and uh, Siena. And the uh, relevant, uh, very powerful family of the Sir Griffi from Florence and uh, and Siena. They were cardinals too, as we can see there. So thanks to all those family crests, we can understand that, you know, well, the Cinta Senese was popular in uh, Tuscany and Umbria too. But more crest of community of the village of Luriano, uh, south of Siena, as uh, again Cinta Senese. So Cinta Senese looks much more than just, uh, just a pig. Also, talking about the Chianti uh, region, this is a very <clears throat> interesting example because uh, it is a fresco painting. Uh, late uh, 15th century, beginning of 16th century um, in Casanova di Ama. So we are in the core of the Chianti uh, region and uh, St. Anthony is pictured with Cinta Senese. Moving to Florence, this is a Botticelli or workshop of Botticelli uh, beginning of 16th century, 1510, the Church of San Felice in Piazza in Florence. So here we can see Fanny Cinta Senese running away from, uh, from Santony the Abbot. Uh, the Cinta Senese was popular in those uh, places, but there is something uh, more. For instance, Moving from Tuscany, we can find the pictures of the Cinta Senese also in uh, Umbria. This is the Church of Santa Maria Vallo di Nera, 15th century, and we can see St. Anthony with the Cinta pigs. Or the Marche region, uh, St. Anthony by Puccio di Simone, is pictured with a couple of uh, Cinta pigs, uh, 14th century. Again, uh, the Marche region, but late 15th century, Pier Matteo d'Amelia, again, San Anthony with a small Cinta pig. So Tuscany, Umbria, Marche. And then we can go to Emilia Romagna. This is a beautiful manuscript uh, dated 1330 by an anonymous painter from Bologna. So we are in Bologna, picturing the life of Saint Anthony. And uh, the 
speak with Saint Anthony is Cinta. So we can understand that Cinta Senese was popular also in Bologna during 14th century. More 15th century Bologna, this is painting from the Pinacoteca Nazionale in Bologna, and Cristoforo di Benedetto in 1460 pictured Saint Anthony with a small cinta. 15th century. And uh, again, Emilia Romagna, uh, early 16th century. Uh, one more cinta. The cinta senese, talking about Emilia Romagna region, was also um, pictured on ceramics from the um, famous school of Faenza, early 16th century. This is a decorated dish picturing Cinta Senese. And uh, masters from Faenza featured Cinta Senese also in one of the most beautiful examples of this style. This is the <clears throat> floor of the Lando family chapel in Venice, Church of Annunziata, early 16th century, by workshop from Faenza. Every single tile looks different. And here, on the center, the painter uh, pictured Cinta Senese. So the Cinta was popular also in Emilia-Romagna region. What about origins of the Cinta Senese? Well, this is another example of the Cinta Senese, but this one is from Friuli Venezia Giulia, is from, uh, from Udine, 15th century. But the most uh, curious thing I've found uh, working on this subject and working on the origins of the Cinta Senese is that the oldest picture of the Cinta Senese is not Sienes and is not Italian, too. In fact, in painting, the old, to my knowledge, the oldest picture of the Cinese is this one from Austria, late 13th century. So we can guess that probably the Cinta Senese is not native from Siena, is not, you know, well, a uh, local uh, pig. Originally was not a local pig, but was imported from north of Europe. We can see how the oldest pictures of the Cinta Senese are, you know, the <clears throat> relief in Arezzo and the painting in Austria. So my personal theory, this is just an idea, uh, theory, is that the Cinta Senese was imported to Italy during the Longobard migration, 6th century, when also the economy of Italy changed a lot after the fall of the Roman Empire. So here we can see, you know, the... <clears throat> Longobard migration touching, you know, well, Friuli to go into Tuscany. Tuscany was a Longobard um, country. Then became particularly popular in Central Italy, particularly in, uh, in Tuscany. <clears throat> I found uh, around 90 different pictures of the Cinta Senese in uh, visual arts. And uh, if we try to consider them, we can see, for instance, how talking about 14th century, 1300s, the Cinta Senese was uh, very popular in Tuscany. So a lot of pictures of the Cinta in Tuscany some of them in uh, Emilia Romagna, Marche, and, uh, and Umbria. And uh, was still popular during 
15th century in uh, green, a uh, lot of pictures of Cinta Senese, Tuscany, Emilia Romagna, Umbria, and some of them also in Liguria, Lombardia, and uh, Piemonte, uh, Piemonte too. The interesting point is that talking about the following century, I mean, 17th century, just one reference to the Cinta Senese in Siena, as we saw, and talking about 18th century, one in, in Bologna. So it's interesting to see how um, pictures of the Cinta Senese are concentrated about um, 14 and 15 centuries. Then the Cinta Senese will disappear, probably because uh, were introduced other varieties of pig, much better for, for economy. The pigs could produce more meat and easier than for the cinta, the cinta senese. So the cinta senese uh, was no more considered for, for economy of Tuscany and Central Italy, generally speaking. We can find another picture of the Cinta Senese only during late 19th century. Giovanni Fattori is a Tuscan painter from Livorno, and over there, pictured two Cinta uh, pigs. So we can understand that around late 19th century and the beginning of 20th century, uh, the Cinta Senese was rediscovered again. Um, today, the Cinta Senese is extremely popular. Cinta Senese became kind of brand of Siena, Siena's identity. For instance, this is just for fun, but it looks pretty interesting. You can find in Siena cookies with, uh, with the cinta, with cinta senese. So the cinta senese is a symbol, again, after Ambrogio Lorenzetti of uh, Siena. And uh, <clears throat> the idea of uh, breeding again after centuries, this variety of pig. Uh, is connected with uh, the idea to rediscover uh, tradition, well, the roots of local culture, the importance also of biodiversity, uh, and to make the Cinta Senese kind of column uh, for you know the economy of this uh, this territory, uh, and. Uh, is not just uh, mm, rediscovery of a variety of pig, but, and it's connected with many DOP products from Italy, is to rediscover the history, uh, art, culture, I want to say the uh, real identity of, of a community, and uh, to make, you know, this, uh, identity, something important for economy too. Uh, Cinta is very important today for economy uh, of this territory, even if uh, the Cinta Senese, you know, is not very convenient in terms of production of meat. But quality looks better than quantity for economy, economy too of the Senese territory. So thank you. I'll finish. Grazie. Grazie mille. Ho trovato veramente interessante questa presentazione e mi permetto di fare una domanda, poi lascio la parola ai nostri studenti. Però mi ha incuriosito molto. E 
Fino a che punto possiamo essere sicuri che a circolare sia stata la cinta senese in sé, come maiale in carne e ossa, diciamo, e, e grasso non tanto, e non la sua iconografia, che a un certo punto sembra veramente intimamente legata al discorso di Sant'Antonio. Cioè, in altre parole, alcuni di questi artisti potrebbero avere visto un Sant'Antonio dipinto in una città vicina, aver visto che il suo maialino è bianco e nero, e avere deciso che quello era un modello non tanto di cinta senese quanto di maialino accompagnatore di Sant'Antonio? Okay. In inglese, in English, I understand. And if you can resume it to our students, it's perfect. No, no, okay. no, no Thank you. It makes sense, uh, of course. But the <clears throat> point is that I show you just a few examples. But uh, for instance, uh, uh, most of the pictures featuring St. Anthony with a pig are picturing no cinta pigs. So I show just the cinta senese. And um, the idea is uh, that, you know, well, local, well, painters were used mostly during Renaissance times, not talking about the Middle Ages, of course, picturing things they could see for some aspect. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, maybe um, portion of those paintings featuring La Cinta could be influenced by other, other artists, mm -hmm. but I didn't show, for instance, an example of a painter from, uh, from Siena that for working in a, for Siena's church, he pictured St. Anthony with Cinta. Working abroad, working not in Florence and not in Siena, in, uh, if I remember, I was working in the Marche region, for instance, I pictured mm -hmm. St. Anthony with regular pig or boar. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, probably in most of those exam examples talking about St. Anthony with a pig. Artists were used to picture pigs they could see, mm -hmm. or pigs uh, people were familiar to. So the Sinas people were familiar with Cinta Senese, or uh, people from, I don't know, well, north of Italy from Padua were not so familiar with, with the Cinta mm -hmm. Senese. Of course, some of them, who knows, uh, probably uh, were influenced by another. Uh, work picture in the cinta, but to me, most of them were samples of people were in that specific territory. Mm. Grazie. E in generale, si distinguono altre razze di maiali all'interno dell'iconografia dell antoniana? <laughs> I'm not a very expert, uh, not a zoologist <laughs> about that. Generally speaking, yes, we, uh, we can identify sometimes, uh, well, San Anthony with a boar, a wild boar, or mm. very wild pigs. Uh, I mean, sometimes uh, San Anthony is pickled with uh, pinky pigs. Uh, well, it depends. Yes, we can find a variety of them. Of course, uh, uh, we can easily identify the chinta because, uh, you know, well, the mm. white belt. Mm, verissimo. E in effetti questa sua riflessione sul fatto che i pittori dipingessero quello che avevano sotto gli occhi fa pensare al fatto che non so se tutti gli studenti conoscono che questi maiali di Sant'Antonio che servivano come produttori di grasso che serviva per guarire erano gli unici nel Medioevo a essere autorizzati a circolare all'interno delle città. Quindi può darsi che questo si leghi al discorso che faceva prima cioè i maiali di Sant'Antonio non se ne stanno chiusi nelle stalle, possono transitare liberi, vengono di solito segnati a un orecchio o da qualche parte, timbrati per mostrare che sono autorizzati, ma transitavano anche in interi branchi che attraversavano le città creando anche 
alcuni problemi e alcuni scompensi. C'è una novella che ritrae Giotto, mi pare, che circola per Firenze, chissà se ha incontrato delle cinte senesi o altri maiali, non lo sapremo mai, e viene praticamente travolto da una mandria di maiali, ma sono maiali di Sant'Antonio e quindi sono autorizzati. E si racconta che lui non si arrabbiò neanche un po'. E allora tutti dicevano, ma guarda, il grande pittore che non si arrabbia, travolto da questo traffico di maiali, e lui disse, ci mancherebbe altro, sono coloro che forniscono le setole per i miei pennelli e senza di loro io non sarei nulla. Non sapremo mai che maiali fossero perché la novella non lo racconta, però in effetti c'è questo fatto di avere direttamente sotto all'occhio questo genere di animale, cosa che probabilmente non era invece, e, e, sicuramente non nella stessa proporzione per un altro genere di razza. Cioè il maiale circola per quella ragione, dove c'è un convento di Sant'Antonio. Ah, arrivederci Asia! Infatti, so, pigs were very uh, common in the medieval towns and they were very important also because they could eat trash. So, yes. Norms, too. Uh, and another good reason. Touch, uh, in fact, uh, uh, sacred pig of St. Anthony. There are some trials about them, too, in some... Uh, Yes. Lascio la parola, I give the floor to our students if there are some questions. Jane? Just trying to turn my video on here if I can. Yes, hi. Um, thank thank you. you so much. Um, to both of you, this has been really, really fascinating. Um, I just had kind of a, a quick question for you, um, kind of, I guess, about what you suggested. I, I wanted to see if I'm kind of jumping to conclusions here, if this maybe makes sense. You mentioned that the last example you see is in about 1601, before then you have that example in 2002. And I was kind of curious because that's also in a period, obviously, of art history where iconography is changing in a, in a huge way because you have obviously the Renaissance happening. And so um, painters aren't depicting, you know, the saints with all their matching characteristics so that people can read it as much, et cetera, et cetera. And, and just art in general is changing. And so I'm curious if maybe the kind of is the disappearance of the Cinta Senese in iconography, is it? not because the Cinta Senese is not under the artist's eyes, is it because just art is changing in general and they're not depicting such things? I'm just kind of curious about the relationship of, of those two dynamics, if that makes sense. Oh, no, it makes sense, of course. Well, actually, there are also in a Baroque uh, style, a lot of pictures of St. Anthony with a pig. We can find a lot of them. The point is that uh, that pig also talking about Sinus territory uh, is, uh, is no more Cinta, Cinta Senese pig. So the point is that the Cinta Senese in uh, Sinus art was so popular during 14th, 15th centuries, and then suddenly no more pictures of this variety of, of pig. And actually the last uh, uh, picture of the Cinta Senese I found uh, talking about this period is 18th century in uh, Bologna, it's a watercolor by a Bolognese artist. But talking about Siena, you know, well, we have a lot of pictures of the Cinta Senese and suddenly no more of them. And the other uh, altered pieces, canvases, picture in the San Anthony, the Abbott with a pig, the pig is no more, no more a Cinta. That's so fascinating. Is there um, any type of like records or anything that really indicate why that may have been the case that the Cinta maybe had fallen out of fashion or was not as important for the scene or something like that? Sorry, the, the voice is 
Uh, the audio, sorry. No, I was just asking if there were maybe sort of related um, uh, documents or records or something that indicate maybe why the Cinta Senese had fallen out of fashion at that time? No. Mm, I tried to find something in a state archive of Siena, but I didn't find anything about that. We have to think, just to guess, that probably because it was too expensive to breed the Cinta Senese and uh, was not convenient for, for economy uh, because other varieties of pigs were introduced. And then when, you know, the la uh, large white pig was introduced in Italy, okay, other varieties, these varieties disappeared because uh, less convenient than large white. So it was very important to rediscover the Cinta Senese, not only because the quality of its meat, but also because, uh, because it's uh, a rediscovery of, you know, well, the tradition and uh, culture of this specific uh, territory. It's an investment too. That's so interesting. So, because you know they were listed as endangered not until two thousand and seven, but it sounds like they've had moments of probably going in the direction of being endangered or close to extinction, kind of over their their history here yeah. in Italy. Super interesting. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming. Grazie. Abbiamo un'altra domanda da parte di Luca. Prego. Buonasera, mi sentite? Sì. Posso per caso fare la domanda in italiano ed eventualmente farmi tradurre perché altrimenti avremo bisogno di stare qui fino a notte, credo. Certo. Eh, io volevo fare una domanda che diciamo trascende un po' il valore iconografico della cinta. È un po' più, diciamo... Vabbè, provo a farla innanzitutto. Qualche anno fa, girando per la Val d'Orcia, mi sono ritrovato a parlare con alcuni produttori di cinta e probabilmente eh, qualche anno fa diciamo non c'era ancora il trend che adesso si respira per questa per questa razza appunto e tutti mi sembravano abbastanza cioè nel senso quelli che ho conosciuto io almeno eh, come si può dire in strago eh, in difficoltà eh, per trovare qualcosa che differenziasse davvero il loro prodotto eh, i loro salami, i loro prosciutti rispetto appunto alla concorrenza e pensavo è stata un'idea partorita proprio in pochissimo tempo lì per lì davanti a un bicchiere di vino ehm, che potrebbe essere un'idea diciamo per riqualificare in sé eh, la razza visto l'alto contenuto di acidi ole e oleici produrre magari amoni iberico diciamo delle, ehm, dei trattamenti più particolari, più raffinati magari anche più dispendiosi ma che permettano poi di differenziare il prodotto. Secondo lei, stando sempre diciamo, su un eh, punto di vista più, eh, più culturale che pratico, come potrebbe essere la risposta del mercato italiano ad offrire un prodotto del genere, un amon iberico di cinta senese? Mi scusi se era un po' confusa la domanda. No, no, poi una specie di super cinta, una cinta ulteriormente selezionata, dice? Esattamente. Sì, allora, rispondo poi in, in inglese. Well, uh, this, is a, this is a problem uh, to, well, the problem is to how to make, you know, well, a cinta senese con, much more convenient for the market basically, and to create a better uh, quality of the Cinta Senese. Think about the standards uh, for bringing the Cinta Senese um, from the consortium of the Cinta Senese are extremely strict and very, very uh, high. And uh, I think that to make uh, stricter rules or better standards uh, could be uh, quite difficult. Uh, to me, uh, as I can see, you know, living 
also in uh, Siena is the, the 100% of the Cinta products are sold because uh, um, customers are asking right now more and more uh, Cinta products. Uh, so I think it's not a particular problem. The problem always is the cost of the Cinta, the Cinta Senese for breeding the Cinta, Cinta Senese. The influence, you know, the cost of M and meat compared with uh, average pork meat. But I, I don't think it's a, it's a big problem right now how to, you know, well, create uh, a better quality of the Cinta because uh, according to the rules uh, established by consortium of the Cinta Senese, well, the quality is extremely high. You know, it's uh, more than organic uh, product. I don't know. Yeah. Are... Thank you very much. No, prego. Non so se ho risposto a quello che... Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Just, just another question. Uh, I faccio sempre in italiano, scusate. Okay. Um, per quanto riguarda proprio il prodotto in sé, un amon iberico di cinta senese, cioè portare una tipologia di produzione che è quello che più lontano c'è dalla produzione locale e mischiarla con invece un tipo di carne che è estremamente diciamo, radicata al luogo, eh, come può essere percepito secondo lei dai consumatori? So, so ho capito la domanda, scusi perché poi... Cioè come i consumatori percepiscono un prodotto tipo la cinta radicata a un luogo? No, eh, utilizzare la cinta senese per la produzione di amon iberico, quindi proprio eh, con, le, tipo, con, con eh, i meccanismi produttivi del prosciutto spagnolo, quindi eh, diversi ingredienti, una stagionatura molto più lunga, eh, e quindi unire queste tecniche di produzione che sono proprio... Eh, fuori dal nostro target di località con una carne che invece è così sinonimo di territorio come può essere percepito dal mercato italiano che effettivamente è molto diciamo radicato al, esatto. alla sua zona ho capito well, that could be an idea uh, to improve you know the market for, for the cinta senese but the Another aspect is that Cinta Senese, as I told you, is, uh, is connected with identity of Siena. So about food for the Cinta Senese, so just uh, local uh, acorns from Tuscan wood and roots. Uh, also techniques for um, making, you know, well, salame or ham of the Cinta Senese. So to me, the Cinta is an extremely uh, local, traditional product. And uh, to create a, a different Cinta, well, could be interesting for, I mean, uh, young customers. I mean, it looks like uh, once compared with wines, for instance, you know, there are the traditional DOCG uh, Chianti, made by 80% of Sangiovese, so the same recipe of Barone di Casoli, but right now, in order to, you know, well, find uh, new customers, they make different uh, wines from the same region with may maybe different grapes. The EGT wines, they couldn't be DOCG, very high quality, but no traditional wines. So the point is this one, to make a so different ham by different techniques, for instance, according as you told, uh, the techniques for Spanish uh, ham by using the cinta, but couldn't be the traditional cinta. Maybe it could be an idea for enlarging, you know, the, the market, to improve the market, as we saw for, with uh, 
uh, Chianti region wines. Who knows? Sorry, I'm not an uh, economist, just an art historian, but could be interesting idea to work on. Perfect. Thank you so much. Prego. Jane, prego. Grazie. If I could just, the, Luca's questions uh, brought up something that is interesting to me as well. And I know you just said you're not an economist, um, but relevant to what he was saying um, and what you were explaining in the sense that the Cinta is such a product that is connected to its locality. And as you've said, um, mostly to the Chianti area, which is an area that is so connected as well to tourism and mostly international tourism. And so I'm, I'm hoping I can articulate my question here. And again, you may not have insight into this, but I, I suspect you probably do at least to some extent. Um, I'm, I'm very curious as to how products such as those from the Cinta Senese are probably suffering during this time when tourism has basically been completely ripped out of these places. And whereas products like wine and even olive oil to a lesser extent than wine, but where those are um, can still be continuously widely exported, products from like the Cinta Senese are not going to be. So, you know, you have this product that's very costly to begin with. Um, and my assumption is that the industry is very, very supported by tourism, which is something that we have no idea what <laughs> the future of it even is. So I'm curious if you have any insight into into that connection between products like this and tourism and how they're suffering, et cetera. So thank you. Okay, well, so, well, they are connected to tourism and, uh, well, for instance, talking about wine or the Cinta Senese are, well, are connected. Well, I think that very few people outside Italy, uh, I'm working with Americans, for instance, and very few uh, students of mine are familiar with the Cinta Senese. They are very familiar with Chianti wine, but this is another topic. But I think that, you know, <clears throat> that visiting um, farms, uh, wineries uh, in the Chianti region, is a very important aspect in order to make uh, Cinta Senese popular among people from, from, from abroad. And uh, this situation, I mean, the COVID situation is a uh, very big, very big problem for uh, farmers and winemakers too. Uh, even if, uh, you know, they're still selling their products. But, you know, well, tourists are playing a very important role for all those small uh, realities, small economies. For instance, I don't know, well, a friend of mine is a winemaker in the Chianti region and is collaborating with a breeder of the Cinta Senese, but, you know, well, since one last year is not working anymore so it is still selling wine and they're still selling the chinta products but you know basically customers are from uh, talking about the chinta from italy or more from central italy so the people who know you know the chinta senese and uh, well tourists the so-called passaparola so it's it's a very important uh, for this case for all those very extremely local products. So it's a yeah, that, very interesting point. No, that makes a lot of sense. I was talking to um, a Cinta Senese breeder um, in the province of Siena, uh, Tenuta di Spanocchia. You're probably familiar with them, especially if you work with Americans. I'll be working there for three months. So and. Um, they were talking a lot about how they've really struggled to have an outlet for their products in, in the face of the loss of tourism and how they've had to sort of get creative because they have these very high end products that were really appealing to their kind of clientele. And now that they're not there, it's not as appealing to the local people because they're so expensive. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. Well, thank you. 
Grazie. Oh, grazie. Mm -hmm. Ah, beh, sono contento. Thank sì. you, everybody. Direi eh, che... So, ci sono domande? Eh. Thank you, da Khalid. No, direi che a questo punto... Il fatto è che è venuta fame a tutti, questo è quello che capita Vabbè, a questo sì, è un problema. Quindi io ringrazio ancora veramente di cuore, lasciamo andare a casa, anche se abbastanza vicino a casa, a gustare tutto questo ed era veramente interessante. È stato... no, thank you. It was a for Grazie. Me. Grazie mille. Grazie, Bye. buona serata a tutti e buon appetito. Grazie. Arrivederci.